week? I'm doing fantastic. I'm happy to be here with you. We got the dynamic duo going on again, two weeks in a row. So I'm happy to be here. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. We have to like let our viewers in on this because it's pretty funny. Yeah. Today, <laughs> today, both of our AC units went out. And I am in Arizona, and Andrew is in Palm Desert, California. So we are, we have fans on us right now. Um, and we are sweating. Just, yeah, we are. But we are happy to be here. So if mm -hmm. we're like, if we're more chill than normal, it's because you know heat stroke is a thing. I'm just kidding. We're fine. <laughs> Everything is great. We're super happy to be here. We have a great show lined up for y'all. Um, Convention of States Virginia organized ten. Um, events across the Commonwealth to push them over 50,000 petitions. So we're going to be talking from the, one of the main leaders of the team there and kind of hearing his story and how he got that to happen. It's absolutely amazing. So excited to ask him some questions about that. Um, of course, you have asked us anything. So if we have time at the end of the program, we will be happy to answer any questions you may have. So go ahead and ask us questions throughout the duration of this episode. But first, we have our Article 5 trivia question with Mike Ruthenberg. So Mike, take it away. Thank you, Whitney. I'm so glad to be a part of the program today. It's going to be a great program. And we're talking about the most important thing, of course, which is finding new supporters, which in today's day and age isn't that hard to do. It's crazy all the problems we're having with jurisdiction and the Constitution and what is going on and what people think that the government is supposed to do and how the Constitution is supposed to work. And that's why we're here. We're here to educate people. We're here to make things happen. And so I've got a question today that will be really good as far as jurisdiction, as far as it goes for our trivia question. So for today, I've got some good stuff to give away. Our most popular item we've ever sold in our COS store, the Pocket Guide, a group of 10 of them we have. I have one of these on my laptop. It's a laptop sticker. You can put it on your car. Of course, this little thing peels away and you get Article 5. It's a really hip logo and it was designed by none other than Mark Meckler's daughter, Lucy Meckler. So it's a rare piece. And we also have a phone wallet for you. So if you have a cell phone, you just want to slap that phone wallet on there. It's great to carry your ID or a credit card when you don't want to take your fat wallet wherever you go. I hope you have a fat wallet. So anyway, here's the question for the day. And it has to do, I gave you plenty of time to figure this out because I've asked this question before. I said, next time I come on, I would be asking this question. You remember, I gave away the book Liberty Amendments by Mark Levin. And, and this week is a great time to be talking about it because it's a very historic time. This week marks our seventh year with the Convention of States Project. As you guys know, that the Convention of States Project very serendipitously started at the exact same time the book Liberty Amendments was published. Nobody knew who knew what. Needless to say, Mark Levin was the ideas. He made, put them out there and it became a bestseller and everybody understands the ideas of uh, Article 5 Convention or a Convention of States more specifically. And the actual making it happen, that was up to us. And we've started, and in seven years, we've got 15 states that have passed the resolution. If you're not quite sure how the mechanics work, hopefully you'll win the pocket guides because in our pocket guides, it explains all this. And it's a little bit complicated, but it's important to know. Of course, one of the things that you may already know since you're watching this show and you're probably pretty invested in Convention of States is what is germane to our call. And we had to spell it out in what's called the application or what the states call the resolution that they pass in their states. And it's to reduce the size, scope, and jurisdiction of the federal government. Any amendment that could do that is germane. To impose term limits on elected officials, including judges and bureaucrats, that would be another thing that's germane for a amendment to the Constitution once we get to calling the convention. The third is to impose fiscal restraints on the federal governments, maybe a balanced budget or some other methodology to do that. And as you probably remember, Mark Levin outlines this in his book very, very clearly. And of the 11 amendments that he recommends, there's only one that is not germane 
to our call that wouldn't really be allowed under the rules of the convention? And that is the trivia question for today. Which of those amendments that Mark Levin suggests in his book, Liberty Amendments, is not germane to our call? It doesn't mean it's a bad amendment. It just simply means it would take its own Article 5 amendment, excuse me, its own Article 5 process in order to make that happen, if you thought that was what it would take. I'll be back at the end of the show to tell you the answer. Can't wait to see who wins. And back to you, Whitney. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. All right. Now we have our special guest that's joining us. He is John Damon, who is the regional captain for Convention of States, um, Virginia. So, John, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. How are you doing this evening? I am doing fine, Whitney. And thank you, both Whitney and Andrew, for hosting this and, and inviting me to speak. Oh, absolutely. I'm so excited to ask you some questions. So normally, COS Virginia would show up at the GOP convention to recruit and meet, meet with legislatures, but this year they had something different that was called an unassembled convention. Um, this has been quite a challenge, so can you tell us why you had to do 10 simultane simultaneous events and why this is very important for the COS so Virginia this is, team? This was actually our quadrennial convention, which means Ooh. once every four years, <laughs> they they elect a, a chairman for the Republican Party of Virginia, and Rich Anderson got it this year. But it was originally scheduled for May 1st. And of course, with the COVID that came out, the, everything got got uh, put off. And um, so um, our past state director thought uh, that it would be a good idea since they were splitting the convention up into multiple locations. And it was talk about that they were gonna do a drive-through convention at one point, so we were trying to strategize how we would handle that. And, and eventually it changed to, in most locations, it was a walk-in um, vote and then leave. And, and a, you could pull up and vote by your car if you had to. Um, but it, the, the idea was for us to be at each of these conventions. And um, so Chris Walker, our past director, um, kind of did the push on it. And we started using all the tools that the Convention of States offers to us, like Slack and um, the follow-up tool and, and um, we, we pulled all these things together so that we could uh, um, utilize it and get the word out and get volunteers. So another idea that came out was we would do a breakfast at each of these locations to kind of meet and greet people who wanted to just find out about us and any volunteers that wanted to come and help us afterwards. It would be a good time to prep them to, on about what we were going to be doing. So um, we actually hit all 10 locations. We had new volunteers at most of the locations um, that came out there. At, at our breakfast, we had 14 volunteers or 14 people who showed up to actually um, do, do the whole, whole day events. So it, it was a good turnout for us. Um, so anyhow, we sat up outside. It was raining in Virginia that day. So for the petition signing of it, every time we pulled a petition out, it got soggy. So it was kind of hard. Um, but it was a good day for us to talk to the, our delegates, our senators, and people who were running for other positions in Virginia who were showing up to vote, too, uh, for the Republican Party. And they did vote for a chairman that day, and they also voted um, on some rules for the Virginia Republican Party. Um, as far as I know, we made contact with three senators, nine delegates, and one um, congressman in Congress, and, and they were all good contacts. For the most part, um, most of the Republicans supported us uh, and what we stand for. Um, there were a few that, that, that are still on the fence about us, and Amanda Chase was one of them, and that's who you're viewing right now. And we had two locations that she showed up, and we got her with Convention of States at both locations. So she is inviting us to come back and talk to her more about it. Um, we know in Virginia we're in a situation right now where it's not favorable for us uh, as opposed to two years ago. The Democrats control both the lower house, the upper house, the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the attorney general of Virginia. Um, we're trying to position ourselves right now so that maybe in a year or two at the most, um, the, hopefully Republicans are back at it again and in there that we can bring this up for a vote again. A few years ago, we did pass the lower house in Virginia, and um, it was actually a few Republicans in the upper chamber that were fighting us that, that we would have passed a couple of years ago. So um, we do feel like it's that uh, wow. they are our target right now. Um, we definitely 
are after both parties. You know that we're, it doesn't matter. We don't care what party you're from. Um, we right. just want you to, to, to sign the petition and get on board with us and, and correcting what needs to be corrected and what we've been given the tool to correct. You know, this is amazing because this is this is being activated. This is spreading the word about Article 5 and the constitutional empowerment that comes along with Article 5. Talking to legislators and people of influence is essential. And by doing this, they are seeing uh, our wonderful volunteers at Convention of States. And in the process, they're learning more about Convention of States and how it is so crucial to solving the problems in Washington. Um, so at this unassembled convention um, that you attended, uh, did you see any positive stories and what was it like being there? I, I, I would say for the most part, for the, the few um, elected officials that were on the fence, I, I think we got more of a positive attitude by being there. We were the only organization at this event outside of uh, other delegates running for positions that set up outside and like you can see it, it was rainy that day so i think it, they were impressed that we were willing to stand outside in the rain and 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 talk with them um people were actually using our tents for shelter uh, in some locations and it, it gave us even uh, more of a chance to talk to people who wouldn't normally uh, um, be thinking about us so um it, the, the whole goal was to to connect uh, with our, our representatives and i, I think we achieve that. Um, in a lot of these pictures, you see uh, elected officials who are talking to us and who are genuinely interested in what we have to offer. And, and uh, we just need people speaking up for us and, and, and getting in these people's ears on a, on a weekly, monthly basis and, and, and letting them know that we're here. We're here to support them should they choose to go our way. Yes, absolutely. And despite the problems you all had trying to get those petition signs with the terrible weather you all had, you guys still passed the 50,000 petition signature mark in the state of Virginia, which is amazing. Can you tell us why those petitions are so important and um, how you managed to pull that off? That's so amazing. Well, numbers are, are very important. When, when you're taking a percentage of your population, we know what percentage that we want to achieve in Virginia that we will become relevant when we speak to our delegates and already we're we're starting to see their ears perk up when we give them the numbers that we have and that's what we want we want them to take notice and but by signing the petition and and showing that we're together on this all together on this we're, we're showing them numbers we're showing them that they don't have to be scared they, they have we have their backs we will support them you do have numbers it, it, you know and the more numbers we get that the better it is for them to take that step or that they feel more comfortable about taking it. Um, so I, I urge people to you know, reach out to their friends, their family, even on a daily basis. Think, have a petition ready to sign for somebody. Have it ready on your phone. It's so easy to do. It's, it's that you, you need to, every time you make contact and talk about convention of states, you should be also asking at that point, have you signed the petition yet? because the, the, we're seeing what the numbers are doing for us. It, it's definitely getting the attention of our delegates and our senators in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I, you talked earlier about what you've seen in Virginia and your legislature. So I wanna circle back to that um, real quick because in Virginia, you had passed in the House of Delegates, the COS resolution, but you didn't quite get it passed or didn't get it quite across the finish line in the Senate, which is unfortunate, but there will always be um, new opportunities. But do you think that the unassembled convention is perhaps laying the groundwork for future success in Virginia? It is. Um, we, we have discussed this uh, at the state level that we would like to try to uh, uh, copy what South Carolina did and, and try to get it on the Republican Party platform. Um, so uh, we did, and uh, I did call the person who is now the chairman of the Republican Party in Virginia and talked to him before he got elected. I actually reached out to all three candidates and got a reply from two of them. Um, didn't get a reply from the third one, but fortunately the one who did get elected sponsored us about four years ago, um, our, our resolution in Virginia um, at the house level, he did sponsor us. So my question to him was, 
if you, you know, if you were excited about it four years ago, what are you going to do as chairman of the Republican Party to advance our agenda, Convention of States, once you're elected chairman? And of course, being a politician, he wanted to talk more about it afterwards. And we have had multiple people call him and we do intend on following up, up with Mr. Anderson. And I feel good. I do. I feel good about Mr. Anderson um, uh, following through with us with Convention of States. So there again, um, it, it's contact. It's getting to know these people, getting them to call you. Um, they want to talk to you. This is the guy running for Republican Party of Virginia. I left a message on his phone. He called me back, he called mm -hmm. you know Joe homeowner in Virginia back and wanted to know what you know what my concerns were. And I told him I, I spoke about convention of states. It's that easy. These people want to know what we're thinking. Um, they, they, they depend on that as they go forward. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to hear a little bit more about your story as well, how you got involved with the Convention of States and what your favorite part about being involved in this historic movement is. Um, about four years ago, I had a regional captain call me, Dave Ross, from, in the Richmond area. And his first question is, why did you sign the petition? And I thought, well, that's a good question. You know, why did I sign the petition? Um, when I first learned about Convention of States, I learned it from Mark Levin. Um, uh, I listened to Mark Levin, and fortunately, I got to see him speak. I was at the Leadership Summit in Williamsburg last year, where he spoke at. And when Convention of States does have the summit again, which I hope they do, I highly recommend it to all the leaders out here. It was definitely a rejuvenating experience. It got me back into the thick of it again, and that's basically what we did with the August 15th Republican Party. We were trying to get people back into the thick of it again by, by getting people back out and involved. But um, anyhow, um, he, when he asked me, I, I, I had to say that my past military experience, my love of country, my love of the Constitution is what got me involved. I feel like it's the I tell a lot of people it's the peaceful way of solving what, what, what's going on in Washington because I'm seeing the other way and the other way is scaring me. I'm prepared, but it's scaring me. Um, I, I don't want it to go that way. I want, I want to solve it the peaceful way. I, I think that's what our founders put that in there for is that you, know, you don't have to fight first. You can use your constitution first to solve the problem. Um, and I, that's what I tell all my delegates and senators too. Here's the peaceful way to solve what's going on in Washington. So that was the big thing. Um, you know, I, I, I want to solve the term limits. I want to solve the fiscal restraint. I want to solve the federal overreach problem on a peaceful means, not like the left is doing or Antifa or all the others. I, want, I think we can do it within the, the, uh, the, con, the by using the Constitution. So, um, but I got involved as a district captain. I started out as a district captain and um, the, the, the tools were um, easy to learn, easy to use. It, it got me more involved as I got into um, the district dashboard, the follow-up tool, Slack, um, the Telepatriot, which we have a, again, Chris Walker in Virginia is great on Telepatriot. We even use that for the September um, or the August 15th mission. Um, so, but, um, the, the, the tools got me more involved and, and then just talking to other people the way I was treated when I came aboard, which is letting people have their agenda, uh, moment to speak what, what is on their mind, what concerns them. And you can hear it, as I'm sure you hear it in, in my voice, um, you, you hear it when you do talk to people, the ones that want to be active and, and they need somebody to talk to. They need somebody to guide them. We're here. We're here to guide them. And that's what got me going. It's such a well um, established organization already in the what six years, seven years that we've been here uh, established. Uh, all the tools are there. We got great people in, in position that are just advancing convention of states on a, a weekly, monthly basis that we see progression. And I like that. I, I like what, what I'm seeing. And, and I, I think this is the answer. Well, awesome, John. I thank you so much for playing such a huge role in Convention of States and for carrying this fight forward for liberty. It's amazing that you are giving so much of your time to this organization and that you're playing such a huge role. 
Um, so maybe there's some Virginians right now who are watching who have not climbed the ranks like you have, but have that same feeling that they want to help affect the change uh, that will that will bring about peace, the peaceful resolution that, like, like you were talking about. How could they get plugged in into your team? Well, um, the, the first step is like we tell everybody is sign the petition. And when you sign the petition, there's a volunteer option on there, select volunteer. We will find a position for you, whether it's five minutes a week or whether it's five hours a week, we will find a mission for you. We, we do have enough work to go around and many hands make it a lot easier for the rest of us. Um, not that I mind it, believe me, I don't mind it. I, I enjoy what I'm doing. I, I take it as an honor to, to be able to be involved with convention estates and, and trying to achieve the, the goals of convention estates. But just start off by signing the petition. And then, like I tell everybody, the, the number two is at a minimum after you sign the petition is call your delegate, call your senator. We will let you know via email once you sign the petition, whether your delegate or senator support you or or they don't or, or, or on the fence or don't support convention estates, we will let you know. So you will have something to work with when you call your delegate and your senator to let them know that, yes, uh, thank you for supporting us. Or, you know, I see you don't support us. What is your concern? Um, that, so that, that would be the first step. That would be the biggest step. And, and two steps right there would, if everybody did, we, we would grow abundantly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Before we sign off, I just wanted to ask you, I know you're talking about the multitude of tools that we have at our disposal as Convention State supporters who are trying to further the cause. Um, a new tool that has been introduced to us is the Constitution Alive course with Rick Green. And I think that you yeah. told us a little bit earlier that you participated in that. Could you tell us a little bit about that and um, what you learned from it? So my wife and I signed up for this, and this is basically a constitutional for beginners. And we're all pretty much most of people who sign on to this are beginners. And just like the Bible, if, if you're a Christian, if you don't know your religion, then how can you practice your religion? So you need to know the constitution to practice the constitution. You wanna be able to talk to other people and, and be able to um, be, uh, be knowledgeable when you explain to them what we're trying to achieve so that if they do say things that are wrong or, 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 or not within what we're trying to do, you can correct them. That, that is very important to, to do. And this um, course that they're offering, which again, if you haven't signed up for it, get on, get on board. They, they want you in week two, they want you in week three. It's every Monday night at eight o'clock um, for six weeks. We just did week one. You can still get on. It, it's important that we all know our constitution if we're going to be out there preaching it. Mm. Absolutely, 100%. Well, thank you so much, John, for your time. I know thank that you're you. busy, guys. We appreciate it. Um, we hope to have you back on. You're just a wealth of knowledge and you know what you're talking about. So it was just a pleasure to interview you. Thank you for your well, time. Well, thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. All right, we're going to go to Mike. He has the trivia question answer for you. All right, well, now it's time to find out the answer to this incredible question. I love the question, as you probably remember from the beginning of the show. I explained that in order for an uh, Article 5 convention, or excuse me, in order for an amendment to be germane for an Article 5 convention, it needs to be germane to this application or as they do when they are passing these resolutions in the states is it needs to be, it, it says right in there, they're passing a resolution that calls a convention for the purposes of providing fiscal restraints on the federal government, term limits, the potential for term limits, and to reduce the size, scope, and jurisdiction of the federal government. And of all of the amendments that are offered in Mark Levin's book, The Liberty Amendments, there's only one that isn't germane. Again, it's not that it's not a possible great amendment. I'm a big supporter of that amendment, which is term, excuse me, which is voter ID in order to make sure that people are citizens and only citizens vote. And that would not be germane because it actually take more government 
in order for us to do that. And so it doesn't fall under reduced to size scope and jurisdiction of the federal government. It would probably cost some money, so it doesn't involve fiscal restraints. It has nothing to do with terms of term limits. That's why it wouldn't be germane to our call. Not to say it's a bad idea, but that is the answer to our trivia question today. And hopefully you learned that there are restrictions in what kind of amendments can happen at a convention, which is a safety valve that's built into the convention. And we are certainly following that. That's what we have for today. Back to you, Whitney. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, all right. So we have a few questions that we're going to hit on before we sign off. I'm going to ask one of them to Andrew, see if he knows the answer. Um, one of them uh -oh. from, I know, right? I know the pressure. It's, it's a big deal. Um, one of them is from Elaine Hatcher, and she asked, how many states do we have now that have passed? Oh, that's a great question. So we have 15 states that have passed. We need to get to 34 states to get to a convention. So that means we need 19 more states to pass the COS resolution to limit the size, scope, and jurisdiction of the federal government. Well, that was a great question, though. Yes, that is a great question. We get that all the time, so it's good to keep mm -hmm. reminding us because we always are looking for the 16th state, as we talked about last episode. We are on the cusp mm -hmm. of that on a few states. So I have my, I have my money on a couple, but um, very exciting. It's really exciting to see who's going to be racing to be number 16. We also got a question about where we're at in Ohio. Um, thank you, Judy, for that question. So Ohio is one of the top three most active COS teams in the country, mm -hmm. which is crazy. And we would yeah. absolutely love to see that growth there. So if you want any more information, go to conventionofstates.com and see how you can get involved in Ohio or any state that you're in. We have tons of different leadership positions, volunteer positions that you can take a look at and apply for. And we would love to have more boots on the ground and have your help. That would be fantastic. Um, and as we talked about earlier, our constitutional live training course with Rick Green and David Barton is absolutely amazing. We've been getting such mm -hmm. rave reviews. Um, Patriot Academy is making it a fun educational video that's going to be um, posted soon. And it's available for free for our for all of our COS supporters, which is crazy awesome, um, but it is for a limited time, so make sure to view that. Um, you don't want to miss the six-week six training course that we have going on with the Constitution Alive. It's so amazing. It's on Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, plus, you want to stick around afterwards because Constitution Coach Rick Green and COS founder Mark Meckler himself will be on that call and they'll answer questions for upwards of an hour at the end so you can't go wrong with that that's pretty fantastic so go to www.conventionofstates.com forward slash constitution to take a look and get some more information about that yeah so make sure to, to join that and also make sure that you are following us on instagram on twitter on parlor I'm sure that you've already subscribed to Facebook because you're watching this, but make sure that you subscribe uh, on Facebook or wherever you get your media fix. And then don't forget also to subscribe to YouTube. Uh, also, come check out The Bow Cry with COS co-founder Mark Meckler on Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And make sure to come back next week to watch another episode of COS Live at 6 p.m. Eastern time. But until then, we have a 